Yeah, it's, it's running now. Man, thanks so much, first of all, to, to, to attend my, my call and, and my, my interview here. It's really nice. I would like to, to start to asking you, it's one of your best uh, seasons, no? Of your career. It was amazing, no? Two victories. Uh, and one against Walt, Walt Van Aert. Wow, it was, yeah, it was indeed, great. Uh, if, you, if you look back now, uh, it was literally one of the best seasons ever for me, probably the very best one. I mean, uh, winning a World Tour race like in Hamburg is uh, phenomenal for a domestic rider like me. And I wasn't winning for six years or so, and now... Uh, to strike again and get uh, two victories in my account is particularly nice. Although uh, we all know cycling remains a team sport and uh, nevertheless, I really enjoyed it to be on the top step of the podium uh, on my own. Yeah, and before this one, you you you, you won in two, a stage in two of Norway, a long one stage, you know, 232 kilometers. And you beat it, yeah. uh, Christoph and Pedersen. You know, was was amazing also, and it was your first win after seven years now since 2015. Yeah, like I said before, a long, long time that I didn't uh, win on my own, um, and uh, it just uh, proves that uh, the uh, yeah that Bora Hans Kohe, the team, the new surroundings uh, probably gave me a, a good lift. I was a bit unlucky in the spring with COVID and so on and so forth, but everyone had uh, bad luck and uh, illness and whatever, like uh, with COVID yeah. and this uh, shit. So it wasn't easy for anyone. And uh, it was a roller a roller coaster season after all. But you mentioned the two big highlights, the win in uh, Norway and uh, especially Hamburg. So uh, yeah. I really enjoy to look back on a, on a successful year. Can you remember me how was that day in Hamburg? And tell me what you remember about that sprint. What was really was really amazing. Tell me about that day. Well, uh, just a random bike race, basically, because uh, um, if I'm right, okay, I did the Europeans after the Tour de France, but that was my first race in with the team again after a little break from the Tour or after the Tour. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we had no uh, classified sprinter in the team, so we had a very open tactic. And um, uh, Rolf Aldago, our sports director, gave us a very open tactic. So we wanted to animate the race and uh, try to make it as selective as possible. And uh, it turned out it turned out to be the the best tactic uh, for us. Uh, we there was the big selection uh, on the famous Wasserberg, and we had already. Uh, with Patrick Konrad, one guy up front. Uh, we get joined by by the favorites with uh, Fanat and Navares and uh, 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 Quinton Hermans. Quinton Hermans, and I, yeah. And I was uh, lucky and strong enough to 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 bridge up to this uh, quartet, and uh, eventually we uh, were racing against the odds because normally in Hamburg it always comes back together uh, to a bunch sprint. But uh, this this uh, group of riders was simply so strong that uh, uh, there was no 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 real chance uh, for the main peloton to come back and uh, eventually uh, all the podium places uh, came uh, from this breakaway. Yeah, and it was it was really smart to the image is a, is great. Unfortunately, I can't show the image here because after the YouTube gonna put down my video. But uh, was, uh, it was really smart that uh, when Wout was looking for one side and you, you cross from the other side, was really a surprise for him and he, he could not get you again anymore. And you beat it yeah, in, the the, same, in the same sprint, you beat uh, Quint Hammonds. Uh, just Philipsen was in six, but uh, in the end was just four of you, no? Uh, Phil Bauhaus, yeah, yeah. Hugo Hofster, and Christoph also. Yeah, yeah. This was the, the guys was in this, in this, in this bunch. No, the, the, the peloton was uh, amazing. Like, uh, I mean, uh, it was a, a big test, a big race for everyone. Everyone wanted to be successful there in Hamburg. It's uh, uh, maybe the biggest uh, German race. And, uh, um, yeah, like you said, uh, every, everything uh, turned out to be right uh, in, the, in the sprint. It's always uh, 
easy to say afterwards that it was the right decision. If I would lose, they would say uh, I went too yeah. early. Now they say I was extra smart by going uh, on the right side and not on the left. And yeah, I mean, it was uh, indeed planned. I wanted to to catch him a little bit by surprise to go early and everything because for me it was crystal clear that uh, he's the big favorite and we all know that uh, Hermans is also super punchy and Navas as well. So uh, and especially after a race from more than 200 kilometers, you, you never really know how the outcome will be. But uh, I had a good kick. Uh, yeah. Got a, got a few meters in between, and then uh, super happy to cross the yeah. first, of course. Also, was amazing. thanks to my to my teammate there because like uh, he kept the uh, he kept the uh, group running. He made sure that uh, we stay stay up in front, and eventually he came fifth uh, as well, Patrick Konrad. So that was a very good result for the team. Yeah. Well, I was telling that uh, I counted this season who how how many riders beat it. Walt Van Aert in the sprint and have names like Fabio Jakobsen, Mats Pedersen, Dylan Van Baal, Renko Van Epoel, <laughs> Dylan Groenewerg, Jasper Phillips, Jonas Vingegaard, Tadej Pogacar, and Hallelujah, Marco Halle. <laughs> Marco Halle did it also. Amazing, no? Looks your name close to these guys. Looks like you're not another... <laughs> Looks like you are, you are not a domestic rider anymore, Marco. I think you are a puncher now. No, I said immediately, like I'm obviously enjoying the, the big result, but uh, I need to stay grounded. And uh... yeah. Well, we feel, I, I asked you about the, the, to be in a German team, no? You were also telling that, you were telling that you're feeling as a family, no? Uh... Exactly, like uh, the boss is more involved, like in previous teams, uh, like for example in Bahrain, that was also super good stuff and a uh, very great atmosphere, but for example, I never met the Sheikh personally. Um, with Katyusha, Mr. Makarov every now and then uh, showed up to the races, as he was uh, also a big cycling fan, but here with uh, Ralf Denk, it's uh, definitely something completely different. And uh, what's also super great to see is uh, that the sponsors Bora and Hans Grohe, they don't do it uh, out of uh, tactical or uh, whatever reasons. They, they do it uh, with real uh, commitment and with the real love to, to the sport also. They are big fans themselves and uh, that's super cool when you can see that they uh, get their clients and they get their partners to the races and give them a behind the scene. Uh, opportunity and uh, I like also to to have this kind of uh, atmosphere in the team because it gives you more motivation. And I have to say that was one team that uh, grew a lot no, after Peter Sagan and, and, and since after he quit the team, the team could maintain the, 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 the level and, and maybe it's bigger than when he was there. Ah, uh, that's... Uh, I, I don't want to to say that it's uh, bigger uh, than it was with uh, Peter because like he was uh, an, yeah. or he still is an icon of the sport. Like sure. uh, he, he was for almost a decade like the rider in the peloton. And uh, But uh, where you're absolutely right is that the team made a, a very good call and very good decisions in rebuilding the squad. It's maybe now more a little bit uh, uh, focused towards uh, general classification and they proved it uh, right away with winning the Giro d'Italia. I mean, that was absolutely yeah. impressive. Uh, and uh, you need to give uh, big credit to to the management as uh, they did very many right decisions in yeah, rebuilding yeah. the squad after Peter. And uh, yeah, success uh, proved them. You you have a you you met already Anna Kissenhofer? No, uh, not personally. No, not personally. Not personally. No. I saw that the, the, also. I would like to 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 ask you about if you if you see or follow the the the, the women cycling and and or and what you think about. I think it's a had a, a change now in the in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it was a big step this year with having the first Tour de France, and uh, uh, of course I, I followed the races afterwards. But I also need to say that uh, uh, if I'm not racing myself, I also like to step a little bit away from cycling. So it's not that uh, I'm craving to get every 
every race in uh, from from the girls or from under 23 or uh, i also didn't follow the to the love in here or whatever but obviously the big races uh, uh, i have an eye on and uh, especially also on this year's uh, world championship because uh what happened there with uh, Annemiek van Floyten, that was also yeah, stellar performance. Like uh, uh, maybe after her uh, issue in the team control, uh, she she wasn't the best anymore, but uh, she was uh, certainly she the smartest. And uh, I think uh, she really deserved that uh, rain rainbow jersey. It was amazing. Well, my last question. Now I, I saw my, the social media told me that you are a married guy now. No. Correct. <laughs> Maybe a recipe or the reason why I'm uh, yeah, why not? most performing yeah. so well. No doubt about this. Maybe <laughs> very nice, man. Very nice. Congrats about this. And when when, when will when will come the kids and and tell them about the the future of in uh, border of your career? Uh, you'll be you are you are not older than me, but you have become older and older. And how 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 the future deserves for Marco Halle? Well, um, obviously. Uh, Team-wise, it's uh, very well uh, settled for the next year. So I still have contract for the next two years. So I will uh, obviously stay with the team because this is where I felt really, really home and good. And like you said, uh, in the private life, it was already a big uh, a step forward uh, with the relationship and partnership now and, and marriage with uh, my wife, Katarina. Yeah. So uh, we are super happy and enjoying uh, every moment of this uh, young marriage and uh, i think this is also proof that like uh, everywhere in uh, in life that you do need a, a strong partner on your side and uh, i'm very sure that she uh, helped me to to lift me up to to this successful season congrats a lot about the the, <laughs> the, the wedding to be the in relationship for coincidence Thanks. or not or not, my wife called Katarina also. <laughs> How funny. Katarina, nice. Katarina Maria from Bayern. From Bayern. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> man, thanks so much for the for this talk. It was uh, just a small talk to talk to you and deserve you the more success and, and victories and good good vibes in next season. So I have to say I was in Vuelta when you when you won in Hamburg and I was, was funny because I was in the in the media center and some German journalist was close to me. Marco won, Marco won. Everybody was happy in a way. It was really nice. It was thanks so much. See you around. See okay. you man. Bye bye. Ciao bye -bye. ciao.